Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're just starting out on your real estate investing journey, understanding cash flow is a critical part of the real estate investing world. It can be the single determining factor if a property is a good deal or not. If you don't know if the property is going to cash flow before you buy the property, you're taking a huge unnecessary risk. That's why in this video, I'm going to help you understand what cash flow is in real estate investing and what determines if a property is going to cash flow or not. First of all, we need to define what cash flow is. Cash flow is the money that comes in and out of your real estate investment. This is the difference between your rental income, so the money that you're receiving from the tenant minus your expenses. Positive cash flow means that you're earning more money than you are spending and vice versa. Negative cash flow means the opposite. So in order to know if your property is going to be a positive cash flow or a negative cash flow, you need to know how to calculate this. So I'm going to show you that in this video. Positive cash flow is important for several reasons. It helps you generate income from your real estate investment to be able to reinvest into other properties or pay off some debt that you're acquiring from the property. It also helps you build equity over time and also the increasing value of the property year after year. One of the biggest reasons that positive cash flow is so important is because you're able to hold onto the property because if you're having money set aside month after month, you have money for emergencies. And instead, if emergency popped up and you were negative cash flow, you wouldn't have money set aside and could potentially lose that property and all the equity and everything that is built up inside that property. If you have a negative cash flow, not only are you having to pay out of pocket month after month just to be able to keep that property, but you might lose that property too because if you can't pay your mortgage because let's say that you're not saving any money from your day job and your negative cash flow as well, you have no money to pay that mortgage. So the, the county, the state, the government, they're gonna come in and take back your property. Now that you know the importance of cash flow, let's get into how to determine the cash flow. There are two ways you need to be thinking about your cash flow. One of them is your pre-tax and your other is after tax. Pre-tax is exactly what we talked about just a second ago, is where you take your overall income and you minus your expenses. That is your pre-tax amount. Your expenses are going to be your mortgage, your property management fees, your maintenance, repairs, your vacancy expense, etc. All of these things are going to minus your rental income and you're going to come up with your pre tax cash flow. Your pre-tax cash flow gives you a good idea if a property is going to be a good property, good investment for you. But this is only pre-tax. You need to be thinking about your post-tax, your after-tax cash flow. Now, after-tax cash flow is exactly the same as your pre-tax cash flow, but now we are adding to the mix your taxes. Now, here's one of the great things about real estate investing. You can significantly reduce your taxes by just simply investing in real estate because the interest on your loan, you can write that off. You can do a bunch of different things, a bunch of different tax benefits to not have to pay taxes. I will get into how to figure out your cash flow later in this video, so just stick around for that. Whenever you're calculating your cash flow, you need to be thinking about it for long term because whenever you're calculating for cash flow, yeah, you might be getting $100 this year every single month in pure cash flow. You might not think that is such a good thing, but you need to be thinking about it long term. Okay, you're cash flowing $100 a month this year. Next year, you can increase rent, so now you might be cash flowing $150 a month. And then the next year, you're gonna be increasing it by another $50. Okay, by year three, you're now cash flowing $200. You can see where I'm going with this. You need to be thinking about your cash flow long term because if you're just thinking about it short term, you're looking more so for home runs than some base hits. What I mean by that is you're looking for properties that are going to be cash flowing $500, $1,000 every single month. And those are few and far between whenever you should be aiming for some base hits. So cash flowing $100 here, $100 there. And then you're gonna be thinking about it long term because that is how you're going to build up this crazy, crazy real estate portfolio that you can now become financially free on. Now, before I get into how to actually calculate your positive cash flow, your negative cash flow, etc., I want to get into some benefits of positive cash flow because there's actually a lot more than you think. As we mentioned earlier, if you have positive cash flow, that means you can hold on to the property. So now you're going to be building up equity because you can actually hold on to the property. The tenants are paying down your loan and the property is appreciating year after year. Not only is that a great great benefit for positive cash flow. Another benefit is it can also help you qualify for additional real estate investments. This is what I mean. If your rental income is, let's just say $1,000 a month and your mortgage is $500 a month, another lender, whenever you go to get another real estate property, they're going to take your rental income and they're going to multiply it by about 80%. So now you're looking at 
$8,800 in rental income. And now what they're going to do is they're going to minus your mortgage. Let's say it was $500. And now you're left with a negative, a positive cash flow. What this is going to do for you is going to allow you to be able to purchase more real estate because now your monthly income, let's say from your day job, well, now you're tacking on an additional $300 because of their calculation. So now you're qualified to buy more and more real estate. It can also help you buy bigger and bigger properties because now you have a track record of investing in real estate. Lenders like to see this so they feel confident lending out you more money on bigger properties. So now you, because you have a track record and you know what you're doing. Now let's discuss some factors that could impact your cash flow. The first factor is obviously your rental income. You need to know what your rental income is going to be per neighborhood. The amount of rent is going to significantly change based off of location where your property is, the neighborhood, the crime rate, all these different things is going to help identify what your rental income is. Saying the right rent amount requires a significant amount of consideration of marking conditions, your location, the features and amenities of the property. Another factor that can impact your cash flow is obviously your expenses. If you have a high interest rate, your mortgage amount every single month you're having to pay to the bank is going to be significantly more. This can impact your cash flow tremendously. It's also essential to track your expenses and figure out some ways to reduce them. If you have a high interest rate and interest rates are lower now, you can consider refinancing. If you your property manager is let's say they're charging you a 10 percent fee you can go out there and find another property manager for eight percent this is all ways to widen that gap between your income and what you're getting from your your rental property and your expenses that the wider the gap the more money that you get to keep another way to effectively reduce your expenses is whenever your property is going to become vacant the tenant is going to give you let's just say a 60 days notice that hey i'm going to be leaving the property so now the property you know is going to be vacant you now have some time in order to set up that property for showings, etc. That way your property is not sitting vacant and now you don't have vacancy. Now let's talk about the role of financing your real estate investment. Let's talk about the role of financing and cash flow. Obviously, like I already touched on, financing can significantly impact your cash flow. If you have a high interest rate, your financing, aka your mortgage, is going to be higher, so your cash flow is not going to be as high as well. Understanding how cash flow works, if your property is going to be a positive or a negative cash flow, it's very critical that you understand this as a real estate investor. A positive cash flow can obviously help you build equity because you're able to hold onto the property for a long amount of time and the tenants are paying down your loan amount and you're able to keep the property so the property is now appreciating. And also something I really didn't touch on is it's helping you build your financial freedom because let's say that you have a $3,000 day income job and now you have a $300 a month cash flowing property well, that's 10% of your income so you're 10% closer to your financial freedom where you don't have to do anything if you don't want to or you can spend time with your family you can spend time traveling you can do all these different things that you want to do because you have set yourself up for financial success I know a lot of us are visual learners so that's why I create a video on how to run your numbers how to calculate the rental income of your property and I break everything down for you step by step so if you're interested in that there's gonna be a video popping up on your screen right now so click on that video if you want to learn how to calculate your cash flow but until the next video i'm out see ya